So in this moment of time, I'm going to be talking in very brief segments going forward because it's hard to upload a lengthy audio cast, and it's not easy to always get and make sure that the people who need to hear the message hear the message. So we're going to try some new minute shorts, if you will. Not marketing minutes, although they are sort of marketing minutes because, in truth, when we talk about marketing a company, we're really talking about the decisions that local people make on behalf of national organizations and sometimes international organizations. For example, when I reached out to Lay's Potato Chips and said, hey, I'm looking for a little help on something, they said, we can't do this all the time, but we'd be happy to send you a couple of vouchers. And they were so kind in what they said in their note and what they've provided to me, which was a very loving thing to do for a human being. Now, openly, I'm talking about what a positive marketing experience that was for me as a consumer of Lay's Potato Chips. They have now become my most favorite brand, and when someone says, what sort of potato chips should I buy? My natural answer is Lay's. They're the only people that care is not true, but they responded in a good, kind way. And that was a decision by their marketing director that was wise. There are other companies that don't make wise decisions. For example, there's a local store that I've been frequenting late at night because when you're homeless, you have to find a place to be outside the cold and the elements. Now, most human beings would be okay with that concept. They would realize that hotels don't allow someone to just go sit in their lounge just to sit. They expect when someone who's sitting in their lounge is actually staying in there and being provided for. But if you are impoverished and if you're struggling to get work because of a litigation abuse situation, that makes it a little difficult to pay for those sort of things. So you have to find places you can be outside of the winter storm. Now, isn't that the point? Isn't that why we got out of the caves of the old time ways of life? Isn't that why we got out of loincloths into clothing? That is the truth about marketing, that everything that we own and possess today came about from someone selling something to someone else and basically marketing a product or a service. Now, when I talk like this, I'm talking in marketing minutes. I'm telling you the truth. But let's talk today about what happened to me early this morning. So, and it's not quite morning time yet, but I have been off schedule a little bit as I've been reproducing a different sort of life for myself. Today was a Sunday, and I went openly to a church. Sadly, my watch was off because the battery died, and I got there after the service began. But I had a lovely experience with their marketing concept of their practical faith of Quakerism. Now, how did that work? I walked in. Their door was completely unlocked and welcoming to people to come in. I used the facilities because at that point in the morning it was natural to do so. And that might be TMI, but I'm trying to project for you how smoothly it went. No one descended upon me. No one gave me a difficult time because I had to use the lavatory. And underneath international human rights law, we do have the access to have clean water and clean lavatories. That is one of the rights that's kind of talked about by many nations in the world. Now, openly, the next thing I did was I discovered that I had missed the service completely, and I just got there at the tail end. So I simply said, would it be all right, since I've been walking a long time, to just sit down in your parlor area and your venditary area or your kitchen? And I'm not really sure what they call that particular. It's probably a fellowship hall of sorts like many of those churches have. And they said, absolutely, please sit down. They let me sit. Then after a while, just about everyone in that very small, and I mean little teeny microscopic oriented congregation said, please stay with us and join us for our meal that we have once a month. It's how they talk about what's going on for their practical organization, how they talk about what's going on in terms of their budget, how they spend their money, how they pay their pastor. I don't know, because the truth is, I was so literally tired that after they gave me such a lovely welcome and a beautiful meal, and I simply said, would it be all right for me to sit a little longer because I was still exhausted from walking four plus miles this morning, that they said, sure, that I literally fell asleep through their entire meeting. I pray I didn't snore, but I don't think anyone minded and they gave me a book on their faith and their religion, which was lovely, and I hope to learn to read it soon. But that was another very positive marketing moment. Each of them said, please come back next week. Now, I pray that's truly a genuine interest, because it was more the congregation who were sort of in their, I'm guessing, based on age demographic, late 70s, um, you know, maybe late 60s to mid, almost 80s, seemed to be who was being represented in that group. But openly, I didn't mind that. I like elderly people. I like talking with them. And they had a lot of life in them. I was having a grand old time sitting at a table with some of the movers and shakers of that little church and listening to them with their banter and how polite they were with each other and how lovingly they would sort of harass and haze one another. But it was all in good fun. And I really enjoyed being there. And openly, that was a positive marketing moment for their church. I've been to a lot of other micro churches that have literally made it impossible for me to feel comfortable to the point that in one church, I literally got up in the middle of the service and left because I'm so disorganized. And I wrote to the organization because of that. Clearly, they need some help. There's like 12 people in this room. 
and that's wonderful, but at some point, God's got to make some living for those pastors, unless they've got another job. Now, there are people who are part-time pastors, and they have real-world jobs and pay their bills, but in life, that's sort of not the point. The point is to evangelize the world in a way that makes people understand Jesus and know about the love of God. Now, what I'm really talking about, though, today is what happened when I visited a Goodwill store. Now, I got led by the Spirit. He said, go on down to Goodwill. That happened to me on Christmas Eve when I was shut out of any family, birth family experiences because I had a family member who didn't come and get me because of an alleged hospital stay. You can't prove that's 100% factual, but that's okay. And I got basically put out in the freezing cold on Christmas Eve. It was very difficult to find a place to be because just about everything was naturally closed. But I did find my way to a lovely sofa in an area that was sort of mm, hidden and sort of out of the way of the normal chaperones that seemed to be around my life. But openly, that wasn't the point. But today, I was led by the Holy Spirit to go down to there because there might either still be a sofa to sit on because I was still so literally tired from all the walking I've done of recent that's a little bit more than my typical four miles a day. But openly, I've also not been able to sleep very well because I've got this man who looks remotely like me, but not really, who's got an odd gait, but he is literally everywhere I go. And to the point that when I stayed at a steak and shake the other night, and I literally fell asleep, and they were so kind to just leave me alone, the problem was when I woke up, I found my coat had been slashed on the inside. And that's sort of ill will. If they're not monitoring their restaurant, if their employees are having fun on people's property, that's something else entirely. But it's a liability if they're not paying attention to the monsters who come in and stalk someone and follow them around. Now I'm talking about liabilities in marketing. I'm talking about how restaurants have to observe their young people, and I'm talking about how young people need to understand what the laws are when they're representing a firm. Now what I'm really getting to, though, is the story at Goodwill. That I literally had prayed to the Lord, because it was so cold, would it be possible if someone is going to come to the Goodwill this evening that they would leave a blanket outside the Goodwill? I would not steal that blanket. I would certainly borrow it for the evening, like I did on Christmas Eve. What I found was that the sofa that I was hoping to sit on that was comfortable was and somewhat fuzzy and allowed me some warmth when I froze that evening was gone, but there was a leather chair that I thought, oh gosh, that'll be cold. But at least it'll be a place to sit off the concrete for just a few hours to take a nap. Who would care? Who would notice? Probably nobody. Maybe a few passerbys who drop off stuff, but nobody's going to say anything to a homeless person who needs a place to sit down. I'm pretty sure that's the case. It just seems to be the young millennials that don't have any regard for people's lives. Now, what did I do? I scoped it out. I saw that somebody put a box on the chair, so I picked the box up and I moved it over because I thought that was a rude thing to do because leather rips and cardboard can be sharp and rip a leather sofa or a leather chair, and I didn't think that was right. So. Forgive me for making that little distinctive executive decision to try and save a chair that was being donated lovingly to the Goodwill store. But literally, what happened within the next few minutes? Another person drove up to the Goodwill store. They were sort of comical to watch. They pulled all this stuff from their car. They threw it on the ground. I thought, wow, this guy's just going to make a mess and leave a mess. But I think they realized they were being watched. And so then, out after they dumped all this stuff all over the ground, they picked things up, put it in plastic bags, and moved it over next to the wall and things like that. But what did they bring? They brought a blanket. Now, I just prayed, Lord, let somebody bring a blanket. Now, it wasn't a perfect kind of blanket, but it was a good blanket. It was kind of a furniture turret to blanket, and they put it literally on that chair. It was like, I prayed to God, God delivered, and then you know what happened? I was encouraged to go and sit, and I think it was to, to teach me how people can be. But literally, a voice came over the speaker as I sat down. And actually, I was, I arrived, thank you for your donation. I didn't say a word because I figured it was an automated system doing that. And that's fine. But they do have a camera outside there. And I understand why they do, because they need to have a camera in order to make sure that no one steals the things that are being donated because that's sort of illicit. It's sort of immoral. And I think it's a little illegal. But in truth, I was planning to just sit in that chair for a little while, take a little nap without being too much difficult to get anyone, which I didn't think was a horrible thing because it was a free donated item. It wasn't going to harm it at all. And there was a blanket on the chair that I thought I can get inside the blanket to produce some warmth for myself for the moment of time, that I might sleep here for an hour. Now, how difficult is that to allow someone who is homeless to sit in a chair, to borrow a blanket, not to sweat in it by any means, but to find some warmth at a place that is supposedly serving the impoverished? Isn't that sort of the truth, that people go to that store literally to save funds, to buy secondhand goods, to produce a life worth living and a retirement worth having by utilizing that sort of a discount place. But you know what happened? A female voice, possibly a police officer, possibly a security guard who was underpaid or, and not really thinking about their brand in terms of good, basically said, 
you cannot sit there. And I thought, okay, so when I told my story to my sibling of where I ended up being on that Christmas Eve, she might have called the company and told them to pay attention. Or literally, that person didn't realize the marketing mistake they were making. They were literally saying that while Goodwill sells these products and items that they get bequeathed, if you will, from people who are kind enough to know, donate their old goods and preferably their washed and cleaned up old things that are still in good shape, that literally some young person, clearly in their 20s, possibly almost 30, was literally going to say, on behalf of Goodwill, you may not find warmth sitting in this chair for a little bit of time. She didn't produce a conversation. She didn't say, hey, what's going on? She didn't say... You know, I'm just kind of noticing that you're sitting in the chair. Is there anything we might be able to do for you? She didn't do anything well at all. And this has been my experience with that particular age demographic. When I visited Walmart the other day, just to get out of the really freezing day that it was, I sat for a while outside of the lavatories with other people. A woman who was clearly battling some Parkinson's disease was left in a chair by a care provider. And the poor thing, I literally spent most of my time praying for her because she was shaking like a leaf. And I thought how exhausting that must be for her physically, trying so hard to just allow her body to settle, and her body was constantly physically moving. And I literally did sit there and pray for her. Not that I'm trying to say that I'm so magnificent, but I just thought it was the right thing to do. My father had Parkinson. He didn't quite have the shakes like that. He had different difficulties. But I know how painful that can be based on the fact that Michael J. Fox has Parkinson's, and he talks about it publicly, and you learn those stories by having compassion for other people. Now, what happened was, I left the place, I went off, I had supper, I did a lot of other things, but when it was sort of late at night, I came back because I was hungry, and I'm a regular Mark, uh, you know, Walmart shopper, and I literally went in, I needed to find something, I got an escort practically the entire way through, because apparently, allegedly, nobody travels in this area, it's that they have to bring their bags in for work, or they have to protect their rightful property, or they might have a requirement by their jobs to carry their equipment so it doesn't get stolen and pilfered from a car in parking lots where they say, hey, lock your car doors, and take all your valuables with you. But again, we'll talk about that another time. But what I'm really saying is that that young man named Derek, on behalf of Walmart, basically, when I went to sit down to drink the beverage that I just purchased, and to have a little bit of respite from the winter cold, came up to me and told me that I was not allowed to stay. And I thought, okay, first of all, you did a horrible job in terms of representing the company. Not only did you not come up and say, hey, welcome to Walmart. My name is Derek, and I'd love to find out how we can best serve you today, because I noticed that you're here. He came up, and he basically told me a lie. He told me that some other manager had been on duty most of the evening, apparently had allegedly said I had been there all night. I don't believe that would be possible, because I was physically not there. I was actually over at an Arby's having a lovely meal with some very nice young people. But the reality is that doesn't make any difference. The point is that he poorly represented Walmart because isn't Walmart another place where people literally go to get a good deal to save on a lot of investment of money for the food, for the clothing, for the things that we need for our lives, to live a life worth living in retirement and having. And I only want to tell you, I've been an avid Walmart shopper all my life, all my adult life anyway, since Walmart became Walmart. I've been a shopper there, literally week after week, for my classroom, for my company, for my own personal life for my children's needs, for my spouse's needs, and openly for that young man to not realize that those seats are there. I don't believe for employees only. They're really there for the shoppers, the people who are the elderly, the people who have narcolepsy, the people who have a need to sit down because of fatigue or health issues. I believe that Walmart knows this clearly, but that young man in his 20s, who was apparently given a supervisor role, didn't think what his impression was going to do. Now, I'm talking about marketing blunders. Marketing blunders on top of, on behalf of companies. These are my personal observations, not at all. These are my definite uh, experiences as being a shopper in a place that I might go in three times a day and shop at because I'm not going to carry three hours or three meals worth of food with me all day long. First of all, the bags don't last, plastic bags don't last long. Enough. And second of all, it makes you look somewhat odd to people in today's world because everybody has vehicles. Well, I used to have a vehicle, but it got impounded, and I've told that story already. That's not the point. The point is that marketing a company is not about removing furniture that allows employees and others to have a sit-down meal when they purchase food at a place. We could talk about that with this establishment where I like to come at night, but the reality is I complained about an employee, and what did they do? They decided to put all the chairs up on the tables at night, virtually closing down the area where people came to sit and employees would have their breaks and their lunch hours. Then today, when I came back in to check it out, they've literally removed the lovely chairs that they have here in this lounge area. And now you just have little tables. 
and I think, wow, this manager here has totally lost the principle of marketing. Now that's me just talking and giving my opinion. These are opinion journalism. This is real-time journalism. This is profound, not at all. But it's telling the story of how marketing mistakes can mark a company for a lot of people. And I'm pretty sure that other people in the shop late at night would like the opportunity to sit down and eat something and be somewhat living in the present world when they might work a different shift than the rest of the world. That is something that every third shifter will tell you, that it's hard to conduct business because everybody rolls up the sidewalks at 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night, and they're just getting off work, and they need to produce a life. They need to produce opportunities to talk to people. When you close down a cafeteria, a venetaria, a place where you can sit and literally meet some people, you take away people's rights to network and to have commerce and to literally to have communication networks that are natural to their time schedules. But once again, we're talking about marketing. We're talking about marketing mistakes. We're talking about marketing blunders, perhaps. We're definitely talking about young people not having enough training to represent firms, for sure. But at this point in time, it's time to close up because this has got to be a brief minute in time. These are marketing minutes talking about examples of how mistakes can make a company look bad to not only one person, but they're going to carry those stories with them forever. They're literally going to talk about those experiences with those employees because they were never trained in professional etiquette of how to handle something that's a little odd. And that's something that these young people need desperately if they're going to represent these large firms that are literally national and international in their brand. This has been Blake Enson of Blaze Communications with Marketing Minutes in an old-fashioned way. Thanks for listening.